related to those students. When students don't come to school, there are funding reductions to California schools. Schools receive fewer dollars when students are not present. And the box to the right of that, when enrollment goes down and attendance is low, schools receive less funding. Uh, so Linwood is currently experiencing declining enrollment. We have fewer students in our schools. And this is not unique to Linwood. Every school district throughout Los Angeles County is currently experiencing low enrollment, just fewer students. Families are having fewer, fewer children. Also, families are struggling to support them, support ongoing cost increases related to living in these areas. So we're seeing fewer students. In addition to that, our attendance numbers have been low. And so school districts like Linwood are currently receiving fewer dollars than they've ever received before. The next two boxes highlight the different kinds of funds that come to school districts. We receive unrestricted funds and restricted funds. Unrestricted funds can be used for virtually any purpose. Unrestricted funds can go to salary increases for our employees, can support employee benefits, their health and welfare plans, their pension plans. Uh, things like our utilities, are just like uh, home budgets have to pay for electricity and water, school districts do as well, and those come from, from our unrestricted funds. Books and supplies for our students and staff, athletic uniforms, and many, many more items can be paid for with unrestricted funds. In addition to that, districts receive restricted funds. And just as the name indicates, these are restricted to just be used for very specific purposes. Linwood receives dollars that can be used just for after school programming, for example. So those dollars could not be used for a salary increase for staff. They're required to be used just for after school programming. We receive additional restricted funds for things like tutoring, summer school, supporting the arts, and specific supports for our English learners. So it's really important when we look at our budget that we identify what is unrestricted and available for us to give to employees for salary increases or benefit increases, and what are our restricted dollars, the dollars that have specific uses only and cannot be used for those things. So next slide, please. So there are a lot of numbers on this slide um, and, and I'll try to break it down to piece by piece uh, so that it's a little clear. Um, so this is our unrestricted budget. This is Linwood Unified's unrestricted budget as of March of 2023. Um, and you can see that it shows three different years and that's because school districts are required to show to the county office that they can meet their financial obligations, that they can pay all of their bills for this year and the next two years to ensure that districts stay fiscally solvent. And um, what's been highlighted here, what you can see, it, it begins with our revenues, how much money is coming into Linwood Unified. And you can see our total revenues for this year in unrestricted funds are $152 million. And then the lines below that highlight what are the expenditures or how do those dollars flow out? And we've highlighted in a couple of orange boxes some of the, the largest expenditures that we experience. As Dr. Crossway mentioned, we place a high priority on valuing and supporting our staff. And you can see that first box highlights the dollars that go to certificated or teacher salaries classified salaries, and those are the salaries of the other employees in a school district, the other very important employees like our secretaries, our food services staff, our custodial staff, and also then employee benefits. So right now you can see that we're expecting to expend about $63.4 million on salaries for our teacher staff, $23.9 million for salaries for our classified staff, and employee benefits, the health and welfare plans, the dental and vision plans, as well as employee uh, pension plans to support them in their retirement. Those are the major expenditures and you can see those going across each of the next three years. In addition, another uh, high expense area for school districts are services and other expenditures. 
And you can see that, that this year, Linwood is expecting to expend about $26.1 million on services and other expenditures. I just wanted to share um, some general items that, that fall into that area. Things like professional development for staff, uh, conference attendance. Um, also, this is where our utilities are paid for, our water and electricity bill, our insurance to ensure that we um, are insured, all of our vehicles and our, our staff and our sites are insured. So there are a lot of items that come here. In addition, uh, as we'll speak about later, our LCAP drives many of the items that are there uh, with specialized grant funds for direct services for our students, such as after school programming and tutoring. Uh, what I'll note on this slide before we go to the next one is you can see what our total expenditures are. So if you look at the top again, total revenues, $152 million. Total expenditures, $163 million approximately, meaning that we are overspending this year by $10.9 million. So we're spending $10.9 million more than are coming in. And you can see that we're working to make adjustments in 22-23, or 23-24, pardon me, and 24-25 to stabilize that because obviously we cannot continue, just like with your home budgets, spending more dollars than dollars that are coming in. So on the next slide, I'll just highlight this year's budget one more time and, and recognize that we are currently deficit spending in, in the amount of $10.9 million. And because of that, our oversight body, the Los Angeles County Office of Education that looks at all of our budgets, asks us questions and makes sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, required and mandated Linwood to create a fiscal stabilization plan. This is not something that was required of every district in LA County, but Linwood was identified as a district that needed a fiscal stabilization plan because as I mentioned on the prior slide, we're spending more money than we're receiving. And we were required by the Los Angeles County Office of Education to identify reductions to staffing to align with our declining enrollment. Because we have fewer students, we need to ensure that we're adjusting our staff and right-sizing right -sizing our staff to match the number of students that we have. And that's what we did do. And that's why you can see that we're able to stabilize our budget in the third year out, 24-25. Thank you. This is one last slide related to budget. That again, just helps to reinforce Linwood's priorities uh, when it comes to supporting our staff. This shows a pie chart, uh, just the same data that we looked at on the slide previously. It shows how much, what percentage of our dollars are going to teacher salaries, to classified salaries, and to benefits for employees. And if you total those numbers for teacher salaries, classified salaries, and benefits, approximately 74% of Linwood's unrestricted funds are going to support our highly valued and important teachers, classified staff members, and all of the benefits related to those employees. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Brian Lucas. I am the Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources with the school district. And we wanted to share with you this morning a little bit about our teacher pay in, in Linwood and compare that to other school districts within Los Angeles County. So teachers in Linwood and in other districts in the county uh, receive different levels of pay based on their level of experience and the amount of education that they have. So you can see, for example, on the far left side, that's a beginning teacher who um, just has their bachelor's degree and no experience yet teaching, and they're earning 55,000, a little bit over $55,000 a year in Linwood. The median uh, the pay for a teacher with that similar sort of experience is $52,000. So you can see we are paying above the median within the Los Angeles County. And the last um, row in that uh, column lets you know that we're, we pay our teachers in the 14th um, ranking out of 44 counties uh, paying in that particular area. 
So you can see we're paying above the median. And if you just take a look at the far right, just to highlight over there, those are our most experienced teachers with the most uh, uh, education in the system. And uh, their pay here in Linwood is $105,000, just over $105,000 per year. The median pay in the county is $104,000 a year. And so again, we're paying our teachers out of 16th out of the 44 counties, uh, I'm sorry, the 44 districts within the county. So just wanted to provide you a little bit of a context to what our pay for teachers looks like here in comparison to other school districts in the county. I believe Dr. Dinkins is next. Um, I don't believe this is my slide, but I can speak to it. So uh, Dr. Giddes, your slide. I'll talk. So, uh, LCAP, thank you. I'm the Deputy Superintendent of Educational Services. Good morning I'm here to talk to you about our LCAP process. Um, we have a stakeholder group that is comprised of parents, teachers, students, and site administrators. We meet monthly and annually to develop our budget. And our budget considers students, need and district-wide goals. Our budget also includes funds for transportation, safety staff, materials, and supplies, as well as newly hired counselors, social workers, and music and art programs. Um, I want you to know that through our supplemental and concentration funds, we receive funds for three groups of students, low income, English learners, and our foster youth and homeless. And with those additional funds, we are mandated to increase those groups of students. And some things we have done are listed for you in this slide, such as hiring additional staff to address social emotional needs, as well as additional um, counselors and additional music and art programs. Next slide, please. I wanna just take a moment to speak briefly about Linwood High School. I've gotten questions about why can't we use the $250 million we received from the state to rebuild Linwood High School for salaries. The money that came from the state to help rebuild Linwood High School can only be used to rebuild Linwood High School. We cannot use those funds for salaries. Doing so would be illegal and unethical. And so again, let's go to the next slide. One of the questions that I've gotten is why do we why have we hired more consultants? And what I want to make sure that people are clear is if you look at our consultant expenditure line on our budget from three years ago to now, there's been a huge increase. We've hired consultants to help rebuild Linwood High School and move portables and to make sure that Linwood Middle School would be adequate to support our students and staff there. The other thing that's under consultants that might be a little uh, confusing for people is that in that category, it also includes our electric bills, our gas bills. And so there's other operating costs that three years ago, honestly, we really didn't have because our schools were closed. And so we were not running the air conditioning and having other expenses like we are today. Every school is now open and we're serving about 11,000 students on a daily basis. And so of course, our costs have increased under the consultants. And just like your bills at home have increased for gas, electricity, and other uh, you know, items, our bills as a school district have also increased. And so we are also experiencing higher expenditures 
um, than we anticipated, you know, three years ago. But nonetheless, we have to pay our bills. And so we have to make sure that we have our facilities ready. And, and the reality is right now, we're being challenged with all this rain as well. And I know some of you parents and staff know what I'm talking about, and that's unacceptable. We have to do better by our kids and our kids deserve better. And as a superintendent, I also have to make sure that we have the adequate resources to address these needs. Let's go to the next slide. And Dr. Giddes will take this one. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Again, thank you so much for being here. My name is Patrick Giddes Robungo, otherwise known as Dr. Giddes. Uh, I am the Chief Technology Officer with the Linwood Unified School District. Um, I wanted to really highlight for you just some of the things that we've been able to accomplish uh, with one-time dollars, as well as some of our LCAP dollars to really address digital learning. Um, as everyone may or may not know, as a district, we have been recognized nationally for all, for all of our efforts in integrating technology and digital learning in the classroom. And so I wanna make sure that you're able to, to see in this slide, just what we've, we've been able to accomplish. Um, every student in our district has now a Chromebook to take home with them or use in the classroom. We are a one-to-one -one district. Um, and so we have a lot of Chromebooks uh, that we deploy out to all of our families and students uh, in the district. Uh, in our TK, pre-K and K classrooms, we also have over 1,800 tablets that we've deployed. Uh, we have 2,500 iPads that we have as well in the district for our elementary students to help with coding initiatives that we have and our innovation labs that we've established at our schools. Uh, we also have now a interactive flat panel, which is about a 65 inch, 70 inch screen in every single one of our classrooms that teachers use on a daily basis. All of our staff laptops have been upgraded during the pandemic. Uh, we are looking at uh, additional one-time dollars to upgrade all of our staff laptops again, uh, because we know that technology is always increasing. And so making sure that we meet the demands of all the, the websites and all the applications, and we wanna make sure that our teachers are supported with that. Hot spots for families as well. So when students and families don't have internet access at home, we're able to deploy hotspots and have access at the home. Uh, we also have upgraded our connectivity at all of our school sites uh, across all of our campuses. Uh, we have a new phone system, which, you know, again, is to help remediate and mitigate some of the costs because we can now leverage our internet connections to do that. We also have a new asset management system and help desk solution. So when teachers and staff are having issues with their technology, they can easily submit a help desk ticket and that we can address immediately. We've also hired three new network support technicians as well um, that we didn't have before because of the increasing needs when it comes to technology and all of the new devices that we have deployed out at all of our campuses. And then the last two slides, again, is around tickets around the, the issues of connectivity, Wi-Fi, we make sure that we try to support those needs. And as everyone who lives in Linwood knows, we often have power outages uh, that will affect all of our connectivities oftentimes. And so we wanna make sure that we're able to support that. And then the last uh, box on the very right-hand corner is around cybersecurity. And again, you know, as everyone here knows, cybersecurity is a major component that is not carved out in the budget. So that has to be, that has to take from general fund to make sure that we address cybersecurity needs. And so I wanna make sure everyone in, in the room and on the Zoom watching today understands that cybersecurity is not a grant. It's not something that we ask for. So we actually have to use all of our general fund money to address cybersecurity uh, for our district. And we are advocating the state as well as our federal government to ensure that cybersecurity dollars are set aside so it doesn't take from general fund money. Um, and so just wanna make sure I reiterate that point as well. Next up, we got mental health. 
so <clears throat> excuse me, some of the services that we've been able to provide with our supplemental and concentration grant funds are we have hired 12 new social um, emotional specialists. We're still in the process of hiring them so that every school has um, that support. Um, they support students who may need it during the day as well as their teachers in the implementation of short lessons to address our students' needs. We also have nine social workers that have been hired and they have been given to mostly our elementary. We have them at middle school and high school as well. And that is also to provide resources and supports to both our students and families. And on our third bullet, we have restorative practices, professional development from a national um, licensed social worker, Laura Mooiman, and she has been working with our district as well as individual school sites. And our handbook systems of support is just that, is intervening when stu students need it and supporting them as they transition back to in-person school. Next slide, please. Um, highlighted here are some of the grants that we've applied for to support ongoing needs for our students and families. I like to highlight um, our learning in innovation grant, which was $100,000. Also, all of our CTE pathways and grants were written by our own coordinator, um, Juan Barroso, who has bought millions of dollars into our district, including our new building at Fireball High School to support engineering. Um, we have tobacco grants and literacy grants where um, Linwood has actually been highlighted and spotlighted by the county for the um, offerings that we do in the summer to support our credit recovery, our summer graduates, and ongoing support in academics and social emotional learning. Next slide, please. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. And so again, I, I, I want to thank you all for joining us today. I know we have some questions in the Q&A, and uh, I'm going to ask Juliette Funes to help us out with some of those questions. Um, I think one of the most common questions is a question about consultants and spending mm -hmm. $50 million on these consultants. What are they doing for our students? Um, why is that money not going towards teacher salaries or for other staff in the district to um, take on? Yeah, so let me take a stab at this, Dr. Jensen, and then I'll pass it over to you. Uh, great question. And so in the last few years, we have received additional dollars from the federal government basically related to COVID. And those funds were um, given to school districts to help out specifically with COVID relief um, items. So for example, we are in the process of updating our HVAC, which is basically our air conditioning heating systems at school sites. And that is not cheap. We're looking at $20 million there alone. Um, other things we did is during the pandemic, we hired consultants, which basically were extra nurses at every school site to help out with quarantine, administering the COVID tests, and making sure that we were able to um, have employees also stay home. And so we had to hire more subs and pay for them. And just to give you an idea, Dr. Lucas, what was the cost roughly monthly or quarterly for our COVID contact tracing and COVID testing? So at the, at the height of the pandemic, we were, we were all deep into it. It was uh, probably around $50,000 a month in regards to making sure we were following our health orders. Yeah, so 50,000 a month just for that alone. And then separately, we had the cost of the actual COVID test um, and so it was really important for our employees that we had these systems in place. And that gives you a sense of how we were able to use some of those dollars. But again, they're one-time dollars, which means we got a lump sum, but we can't continue spending them. And when we give them to employees, we have to renew them every year. And the state also advises us not to use uh, one-time funds for salaries. Uh, Dr. Jensen, anything else to add to that? You did a wonderful job. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. Uh, I, I would just add, I think that there's a, a, 
a misperception that it's $50 million on consultants. And as we highlighted a couple of times in the presentation, there's a line in the budget called services and other operating expenditures, and consultants are a small part of that. That $50 million also includes our unrestricted dollars that go to things, as we mentioned, like utilities, keeping our lights on, um, uh, keeping our lawns watered, uh, professional development for staff. There are many things that go into there that are not all consultants. So I just wanted to clarify that. It's, it's, there are many things that are bundled into that one section. Um, again, another if you have questions, please add them to the Q&A. Thank you, Julia. Yes, um, another question. Why does Linwood keep hiring more directors and superintendents if we're in declining enrollment? How does salary compare to other districts? Uh, I can start off with that too. So we actually have been reducing the number of administrators um, going back to 2017. If you go back to 2017, we had more assistant principals, directors, we had an extra, a different department, which is just our equity department with its own director. And because of our decline in enrollment, we've had to make some difficult decisions. And again, trying to make sure that we're able to stabilize our classroom environment and not increase student class size. And so we now have less assistant principals, directors, we have another less department in our district. And so again, before, you know, we always have to just continue making those adjustments. And so we now have the least amount of administrators that we've had in Linwood um, probably in, in a long time. Dr. Lucas, you want to take on the question about the salaries as well? Well, we do provide, um, there, there is not a similar uh, chart or comparison, which I showed in regards to teacher salaries in regards to director salaries. But we are definitely within the median, within the market on, in regards to director salaries as well as principal salaries. Any other questions in the Q&A, Juliet? Um, how has the COVID relief money been used to help students in the classroom? You want to take that one on, Dr. Dinkins? <clears throat> sure. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we uh, have a, a robust hiring process to support our students with our learning, our social emotional specialists, and our additional licensed social workers who have been instrumental in supporting kids um, in classrooms and at school sites. We also have increased our tutoring opportunities where we have 24 hour seven days a week access to tutors. And we've also implemented um, additional tutoring um, virtually at the third grade. And then I, I do wanna also add, <clears throat> excuse me, that we've also contracted again with consultants, but we wanted to make sure that our employees also had access to social emotional support. So we are working with the county office through EASE to provide our employees, every single employee who needs access for social and emotional support and their families with that additional support. And then aside, I know Dr. Giddes went over this again, but I wanna ask him again to talk a little bit more about um, the, the technical support and the professional development that we not only provided for our staff, but also for our families. We hired um, additional staff, basically coaches, to be able to support families and grandparents with you know sign up to Google Docs and, and Google Meets and things like that, Dr. Giddes? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Crossman. <laughs> so just to kind of reiterate that when it comes to COVID relief, we recognize that social emotional learning has to be at the forefront, um, but COVID relief was also during a period of distance learning. And so um, with Dr. Dinkins' support, we were able to use COVID relief dollars to hire uh, digital learning coaches for every one of our campuses to then provide support um, frameworks, be able to create content to be able to support families uh, with digital learning needs and distance learning needs. In addition to that, again, when it comes to COVID relief, we recognize that internet access is also very challenging for our families. And so, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we deployed out over 3,500 hotspots 
uh, that has now gone down because COVID relief dollars are one-time dollars. And so now we only have about uh, 400 to 500 Wi-Fi access points um, that are deployed out. But we've also partnered with Spectrum. Uh, Spectrum, as some of you, some of families may have received a cable modem uh, that came to their house or a self-install kit, because our vision, again, is making sure that every family, every student has access to the internet. And we believe that you know, students who have had internet access when they enroll in our student in our in our schools, they should be able to graduate with that as well. And so that, that's part of, of what we're we are really focused on. Um we have support technicians as well that we've hired through COVID relief dollars. And so all of that is in the millions of dollars um, that we've you know devoted to staff, you know, devices, internet access. So hopefully that answers that question. Thank you, Dr. Geddes. Uh, Juliet, we have time for maybe one more question. Is there another question out there that we can answer? Yes, there is one related to the LCAP. Um, about joining the LCAP, sorry. I'm sorry, say it again, you got broke, you broke up. Sorry, I, we have a, uh, someone who's interested in joining the LCAP and just getting more information about how that um, sure. know, plays, a, plays a role, so. Yeah, so we we invite students from the secondary schools to join us <clears throat> to serve on the LCAP. And then also our parents. Our parents, we have different um, parent committees like uh, our DAC special ed, our migrant ed group, and we invite the chairs to also join us for the conversation with the LCAP. Um, but I'm gonna pass it over to Dr. Dinkins because he's been overseeing the LCAP. And I think this is a great question because the LCAP, as she mentioned earlier, is, is really for all of us to come together, right? With parents, students, teachers, and to ask ourselves, you know, what is it that we want to accomplish as an organization? What are our needs of our students? What are our parents asking for? And we survey our community, we survey our staff, we survey students, and, and together we have these really robust conversations. And of course, there's always more need than resources available. And so for us, it's about also helping prioritize through the LCAP process, how we're gonna best use those resources. Dr. Dinkins. Yeah, so as Dr. Crossway has pointed out, it is comprised of teachers, parents um, um, and students from our secondary level. And pretty soon a survey will be coming out. I invite you all, we will post it to the website and I invite you all to uh, take that survey because that is also one of the ways we collect input from the community as well as um, all of our constituents. And we, we report that data along with the data from our stakeholder group um, and, and setting our priorities. And we have five and they're all student centered on outcomes, our English learners, our A through G college and career ready and our parent engagement. And so we can provide you more information. Uh, we have LCAP meetings monthly. Um, our stakeholder group is set for the year, but we're happy to meet with you, provide you more information. And I'm going to have Ms. Juliet put my email in the chat and you can reach out to me for more questions. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. I wanna thank all of you again for joining us today. I hope you found this webinar and information session helpful. We're here to support our students, our families, and of course, all of our employees. And we will continue working in collaboration with all of them to make sure that we continue moving forward as an organization. I can't thank you enough again for your support and entrusting us with your children. And um, I just wanna just pause and take a moment to also thank our fantastic Spanish translator, Elizabeth, who's been doing a fantastic job. It's not easy to translate on the spot so quickly. So thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day, enjoy the rest of your week and uh, be safe out there. Thank you.